All right, so you're on the USMLE and you're stuck between a few answer choices. Let's go through the pathophysiology of each of these diseases and integrate the high yield and BME points. Answer choice A, casein and granulomas in all layers of the intestine. This one is interesting. It refers to intestinal tuberculosis. Watch for acid fast bacilli. And just to contrast, Crohn's disease is non-caseating granulomas with transmural inflammation. Answer choice B, flash shape ulcers with narrow necks and broad bases. This refers to entamoeba histolytica. Watch for liver abscesses and entamoeba eats erythrocytes, i.e. there will be RBC inclusions within the protozoa. Answer choice C, inflammation limited to the mucosa and submucosa. This refers to ulcerative colitis. Watch for crypt abscesses and the association with P. anca. Compared to Crohn's disease, UC has more bloody diarrhea. Answer choice D, pseudomembranes of fibrin and inflammatory debris. This refers to Clostridium difficile. The US Emily loves to sneak in an antibiotic prodrome with watery diarrhea and leukocytosis. For US Emily Step 2 CK, you need to know next best step in management, oral vancomycin. And for step one, remember that the toxin is going to disrupt the cytoskeleton of the enterocytes, leading to the pseudomembrane formation. Answer choice E, thickening of the muscularis mucosa. This refers to chronic inflammation by Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease, transmural inflammation that can lead to strictures as well as fistulas. Now we talked a lot about inflammatory bowel disease and the USMLE loves for you to know the extra intestinal manifestations of IBD. They include rashes such as erythema nodosum and apthystomatitis, all the way to arthritis such as the IBD associated seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Remember, every answer choice has a certain concept or diagnosis behind it and follow me for more USMLE tips to help you think like the test maker.